Through the years, the Book of Abraham facsimiles have elicited various comments from various types of scholars, <laughs> as well as quacks, and uh, they've captured our imagination. It's very interesting to uh, discuss and see the uh, interpretations and ideas that, that they've been displayed. One of the uh, LDS scholars, Hugh Nibley, did probably the most elaborate studies in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s before he died. And now the LDS Egyptologist John Gee has carried on the Nibley legacy in some very interesting ways over the course of the last decade in this new millennium for the first 10 years since the year 2000. Uh, Dr. Gee has been putting together some enormous amounts of study on the facsimiles and especially in the hypocephalus and I want to talk about some of his newer materials that he's been discussing with the hypocephalus with you. Now through the years critics have said that uh, Joseph Smith and the facsimiles in the book of Abraham is some of the weakest materials showing Joseph Smith as a complete fraud but this is said without much understanding of the uh, ancient Egyptian religion or the purpose of the facsimiles in the book of Abraham or of the purpose and function of hypocephali in general how do the three facsimiles relate to one another so on and so forth Dr. Gee has put together many different studies that discuss, among other things, the shape of the hypocephali. I used to think all hypocephali were round. That's not true. John has now found square hypocephali, and he's also found three-dimensional hypocephali, which I think is utterly intriguing. So with this, with this new discovery of Dr. Gee's on the various hypocephali, I think it's time to reassess and reanalyze just what is going on with these things. Now, Dr. Gee discusses in the Egyptus et Pannonia, this is volume 3 for 2006, he discusses this idea of non-round hypocephali, and he classifies the typology of hypocephali also. He's gathered together 83 different types of hypocephali, and he puts them into the classification according to the rim inscriptions and other various criteria. He's translated the rims of several of these hypocephali to see what it is that the rims are saying. Now, the rim in the Joseph Smith was incomplete. He added some hieratic characters into the incomplete portion of the left lower corner, as it were, of the hypocephalus. But other hypocephali have the rim inscriptions, and a lot of the rim inscriptions have a lot of similarities, but there are also a lot of differences. And after he translates the rims of about, oh, five or six different hypocephali, he begins to describe what hypocephali are. What is the function of a hypocephalus? And here is where some new information has come out that is extremely interesting for me, from my point of view. A hypocephalus is normally thought to be a disc placed under the head of the mummy. That's what the Greek word hypotenkephalon means, the hypocephali. Hypo is the Greek prefix for under, and cephalus, of course, is the head, so they thought it was under the head. This is the Greek translation. However, in between the Greek translation and the Egyptian description of hypocephali themselves, we've missed something. John Gee caught this. This is so interesting for me. This is the round facsimile number two in the Book of Abraham. The inscriptions are thought to be connected with Book of the Dead, chapter 162, the way to make a flame for the person. It's very interesting in that regard. He says the connection, and then there's been some disagreements with that, but he says the connection between hypocephali and Egyptian Book of the Dead, chapter 162, is very real, and he shows the analysis of that. I won't get into that detail. He says, the expression for the Egyptian description of the hypocephali is hair tep, and hair tep is usually used in the rubrics for the Book of the Dead, 162, to describe the placement of the hypocephalus under the head of the mummy. However, we need to clarify something. The phrase hair tep 
means besides, not necessarily under. And so these discs are thought, there's, there's a quite special sense of a person or thing being beside a recumbent person. And he says, it can mean under the head. There are situations where this occurs this way. But the overall general description of this is to be placed beside the person. Hypocephali are placed both beneath the head of the deceased body as it lies in the coffin, but it's also placed at the top of the head of some of the mummies. Since hypocephali are not always under the head, there's no reason to make an exception for them associated in the Egyptian Book of the Dead 162. The correct translation of Hertep in all instances is at the head of the person or beside the head but it's never supposed to be translated as under the head. Now why is this significant? Because of what John Gee ties into the descriptive use of hypocephali. And this is where it gets extremely interesting. Dr. Gee notes that there have now been found rectangular hypocephali. And not only are there rectangular hypocephali, we now know that there were three-dimensional hypocephali. And this gets fascinating because the most unusual facts, or the most unusual hypocephalus found in the Cairo Museum, the general catalog is number 910. It comes from the Syed period. It's a basal statue of a cow in front of whom kneels a figure. Now, the cow, of course, is one of the important features of a lot of hypocephali. But only parts of the legs of the figure are in existence now. The entire rest of the body has been hacked away from this statue. The inscription around the base, however, is a copy of Book of the Dead, chapter 162. The base inscription, along with the three-dimensional representation of the cow, that is so common both in the round and rectangular hypocephali, by the way, what this does is it marks this as a hypocephalus. It's just a 3D. The statue is in front of you, and around the base is the description of chapter 162. The interesting thing is, this means that whatever the human figure may have been doing, that's connected with the hypocephali. The fact that it is found on a statue from the Egyptian temple indicates that the hypocephali are connected with a practice for the living. These are not simply funeral cushions to put under the head of a dead mummy. They're associated somehow with the living and what they're doing in the temples. And this is a very significant advance in our understanding of these hypocephali. The critical edition of the Book of the Dead 162 contains only 17 copies. It provides textual variants about the translation of what this chapter is all about. He discusses several of these, and it's normally mistranslated to read a spell for providing heat under the head of a spirit. This is a typical translation, but this is not a correct, accurate representation of what the Egyptian means. He says the textual variants are notable since in the earliest copies we read a chapter of placing a lamp beside an ock, A-K-H. So there's something to do with a lamp here. In another one of the later portions of the text, some of the earlier manuscripts also read, Come to Osiris so that you may place a lamp beside his head. The Egyptian word for lamp is similar to the Egyptian word for flame. And the two words are not all that different at all, he says. And so what we have here is a derivative from Ha Basu, the bowl of fire. Now this bowl of fire, being a lamp in the etymology, as well as in form and function, is a fire pot. This is very interesting because the purpose of the chapter 162 is arguably for setting up a lamp in the tomb rather than providing heat. Why is that significant? Because 
Certainly, lamp donations, or rather endowments for the support of lamps, are known from both the Middle Kingdom and later 